Hi, students. Welcome to video 31 on sustaining aquatic biodiversity. So we're going to look at a couple different case studies. The first one's going to be on whaling. Um, so in the 1970s, the United States decided it was going to stop whaling. Um, and it also banned any kind of whale products from coming into the country. Other countries, though, continued whaling. So in 1986, um, there was a complete worldwide moratorium on commercial whaling, meaning that it basically banned it at that point. Um, so it was pretty successful from, we went down from about 43,000 whales that were killed in the 70s to only about 1,500 in 2009. But you do still have a couple countries like Japan, Norway, Iceland that have basically ignored it. And so they're still doing the whaling for different reasons. Um, but it is illegal, and if they get caught, it's kind of, you know, they can get penalties and stuff like that. Um, the other thing is sharks. So sharks are, are a keystone species. Um, they're also an apex predator, which makes them really, really important in the ecosystem. Uh, a lot of people are afraid of sharks, but for every one person that's injured by a shark, people kill about 1.2 million sharks. So we are much more dangerous to sharks than they are to us. And about 32% of the species today are threatened with extinction in some way. So the greatest marine biodiversity is found in places like coral reefs, estuaries, and the deep ocean floor. Um, the surface of the ocean is not very diverse. We've talked about that when we talked about NPP and GPP. Um, so near the coast and on the bottom is where you're going to find the most diversity. So most fish, when we talk about harvesting, are harvested about 200 miles offshore. We usually don't go out into the deep ocean um, and get fish. If we do, we're using nets and things like that. Um, but we do this along the continental shelf and in estuaries, places where we know fish are going to be very abundant. So we look at the... Um, Ecological and economic services, get a couple of these down to be able to talk about. Um, so aquatic environments moderate climate, they absorb CO2, we talked about that with ocean acidification the other day. Um, they cycle nutrients, they also help us with wastewater treatment, um, and of course they have you know very diverse habitats and nurseries. Um, economically, they provide us with food, um, pharmaceuticals, recreation, people like to go scuba diving and snorkeling around coral reefs. Um, so it's going to bring in money that way. Um, and they also actually provide us with um, building materials in some places. So as with almost everything, humans are destroying and degrading some of these habitats. Um, this picture over here is of the um, ocean seafloor after there has been a trawler that comes through. Basically, it's like a big um, spoon or fork that tears up the bottom of the floor um, looking for fish or other organisms. Um, things that were, are also happening, global warming is bleaching the sea, the coral reefs, basically killing them. Um, mangrove forests are being threatened by sea level rise. We look at freshwater areas, we're talking about damming rivers and streams, and we also are using um, excessive water um, from our aquifers. So looking at Lake Victoria, um, here's a map of it if you're not sure where it's at. It's in Africa. Um, a lot of the most impactful things that humans are doing there are we have introduced a lot of invasive species um, like the Nile perch, for example, over here. You see how massive this thing can get. Uh, we can use it for food, but apparently it's not really that great. Um, so people usually don't. Uh, but it does eat everything else. And then also we're adding nutrients and this is increasing algal blooms. Um, we're putting things like sewage in the lakes and rivers, and so um, algal blooms are occurring from that. Uh, here at home, this is uh, the Great Lakes. These are the largest body of freshwater lakes on the world. Uh, and we have a lot of invasive species like the zebra mussel that you see here that are in these lakes and destroying the natural uh, ecosystem. So about 162 non-native species there. Um, humans are also doing things like creating noise for aquatic species that would not normally be there. Um, again, there's lots of nitrates and phosphates leading to this eutrophication problem that we talk about a lot. Um, we're adding toxic chemicals to the water. We're also adding plastics like this poor little seal down here that has its uh, mouth that's basically shut. Uh, and then kind of the classic example is the sea turtle and the soda can or the soda plastic um, got stuck and it had to grow around that. 
So we talk about a fishery, we're talking about an aquatic species that's concentrated in an area that we can um, commercially harvest at a profit. Um, there's also something called a fish print, which is sort of like your ecological footprint, except this is specific to the ocean. Um, so this is the area of the ocean needed to sustain what we're eating. Um, it's bigger for the world than it would be for our country. And marine and freshwater fish are threatened with extinction more than any other species, period. So this is an example of what happens when we overfish and we have a collapse of a fishery. This is the Atlantic cod. Um, you probably don't know much about it because it basically went, um, not extinct, but it collapsed in the early 90s. Um, so we did really good uh, at fishing it. We took a lot of the population out. Um, so the fishing industry was booming, but then it collapsed. And you see it's basically down at near zero. So it has not um, restored itself yet, even now after 20 some years of not fishing it. So how do we get fish out? There's a couple of different things. I would recommend drawing these pictures to help you remember. Um, trawler fishing is basically you have a net behind a boat um, and you move the boat. You can also fish farm in cages. This will be like aquaculture. Um, purse scene fishing is this kind of scoop net over here and you kind of scoop down to the bottom and collect the fish. Uh, long line is basically imagine you out with a fishing pole, except there's a ton of hooks on this line, a ton of bait. Um, you can also have a deep sea aquaculture cage. It doesn't have to be offshore. Um, and you can do drift netting, which is kind of like taking two boats, um, or in this case, a buoy, and going around in a circle and collecting the fish that are there. So some causes for the fishing decline. The biggest thing is overfishing. Um, so basically we're taking fish out uh, at a faster rate than what they can replace themselves. Um, ways that we are doing overfishing is using our technology that's really efficient. It's great, uh, but the problem is it's causing us to be, um, a lot of our fisheries to be overfished. Um, another issue is bycatch, where we catch non-target species. As many as 80% of the fish caught might even be bycatch. So if you go out and you fish for 100 fish, 80 of those individuals may be things that we don't want. And we're talking about sharks, dolphins, sea turtles, you name it, it's all included in bycatch. So when we try to figure out how many fish that we can catch, we try to hit this maximum sustainable yield line. So if this is what we think the carrying capacity is, what the population of the fish is, again, we're estimating that. Um, but if we're correct, then the maximum sustainable yield is right at about this 50% mark. So this would be a population that's estimated correctly. We are taking out about half, and so therefore we're leaving half to replenish themselves. If we overestimate the population, then instead of keeping it at that 50%, we are taking out more than what's actually there. But you don't usually know that until you get down to about this point. Uh, and then you're like, oh, we're overfishing and going to cause a collapse here. So again, know that term, maximum sustainable yield. What can we do? We can enact laws, treaties, economic incentives. We already know about sites for um, kind of making international trade of endangered species illegal. Um, global treaty on migra migratory species, so dolphins, whales, sharks, we kind of know where they migrate throughout the season, so we don't fish in those places. Um, protecting mammal um, species like dolphins, um, it's illegal to catch those. Endangered Species Act also helps if we put a species on that list, like the sea turtle over here that's caught in a net. Um, and then whale conservation, we know that that's been relatively successful from our whaling practices. So other th the ways that we can manage fish, um, we can set limits, we can provide protected areas where it's not um, allowed to be fished. Um, consumers can, um, you know, buy things, be more incentivized to buy things that are sustainably caught. Um, with bycatch, we can use specialized nets that allow our smaller species to escape if we don't want them. Um, and we can make restrictions on aquaculture because aquaculture provides a lot of pollution that we don't want. So here's a gear restriction. Um, the netting on this has large holes that allow for the smaller fish to escape. So that way we don't catch those if we don't want them. Um, but this doesn't necessarily work for larger things like dolphins. 
Well, there's also consumer-based solutions. Um, you can be aware of what is the best choice. So what is the best thing that you can buy? Here's a list of different things. Um, good alternatives would be things that you can also buy that are not the best, but they are still good. And then what fish should you avoid? So you'll see that the Atlantic cod is over here to avoid. Um, there are still some places that sell this, um, but we shouldn't be because it's definitely overfished still. So in summary, marine fisheries are very important, um, but they are being exploited and depleted. Um, and a major um, cause of that decline is our overfishing. Traditional fishing management has not really been effective. We've ended up overfishing a lot of things. So we're going to need some new approaches, new technologies, and new solutions for this. All right, that's it. Bring your questions. Be ready for a quiz.